Hello folks and welcome back. So, I know it's been a few days, I apologize. Uh, but in the last one we set up our save screen. So now let's actually save that data. So, but the first thing we want to do before we do this is, um, I'm going to open up my play blueprint real quick because I need to add a variable to her. And this is going to be my SP location, which is save point location, so that when we save the data we'll know where they were at because if you remember we set these statues up where they can have different locations so now I'm gonna open up the save point because right here at the very end where we've opened the menu uh, I'm just gonna cast to my player get player character and then set SP location to this one. Alright, now with that all done, in our save system folder, I'm going to right click and add a blueprint class. Now it's not going to be any of these. Click this little drop down and t search for save game. I'm going to call this new blueprint apparently because of auto saves no it's gonna be my player save underscore sg so this is what's going to actually hold on to all of our variables so just so that this video is not super duper long I'm only gonna store a few variables this time and then I'll do a side video going over the full in-depth process uh, but right now I'm just going to get my lo save point location, level, and the gold. Oh, and uh, one thing that we're going to include in here is actually the actor's transform also. So I'm going to add four variables. First one is location, which will be a text. Level, which is an integer, just like the gold will be. And then this one is going to be P layer transform. I was just going to put a P, which is why I said that so weird. But I figure I'll just go ahead and spell it out. Player transform. All right. So that's all we got to do in here. So compile that. And then we need to find our game mode. So you can create a new one. I'm just going to use the third person game mode that came with it. So I'm going to double click and open that up. Open the full editor. And then I'm going to add on a begin play node. Cast to my player. This is just so that when we get to the loading point later on, it'll be easier. We don't need this just yet. But this way it's in place when we do. And that's going to be my player reference. Alright, so now we need two custom events. Well, just one for this, just for now. So we'll create a save game function. We will drag off there and ask, does save game exist? Now on this custom event, I'm going to add an input. Since we're having multiple slots, let's, uh, let's just call that save slot and it'll be an integer. Now we're going to connect that to this pin real quick, move this out of the way, and then promote this to a variable called save slot. This will let us access different save slots depending, you know. So we're promoting it to a variable because we'll need more in a bit. So I'm going to add a branch, and if it doesn't exist, that I'm going to create it. Create save game object. The save game object will be that player save that we set up. And I'm going to promote that to a variable called save sys. And then I'm going to save game to slot. Now this doesn't this isn't the full thing. This is just it has to create it and then save that it's been created so that we can access the functions out of it. So I'm going to hook my true all the way up to here. Because every time we save, 
if we if we only go off the false, then it'll get to here and be like, does it exist? All right, well, I don't want to do anything then. So we want to hook this up to our save game to slot. Then right after it, we want to load game from slot. Because we have to create it and then save its creation so that we can load it. There it goes. So that we can then cast to our save game system and actually store our variables. It seems more convoluted than it actually is, but after we've created it, then we'll save its creation. We'll load its information so that we can cast to the player save. And then we will set. Oh, I, I was wrong. We do actually need that player reference. So I'm going to set. Uh, the location. I'm going to add a sequence node so that we can hit everything that we need to. So I'm going to set location, set level, set gold. And then set tr player transform. So I'm going to hook these up just like that. Drag out my player reference that I mistakenly said we won't need, that we do need. And I am going to get, let's see, SP location, plug that into the first one. So basically what we're doing is we're casting to all the variables that we create inside the player save system. Getting the related variables from our player and then setting them to each other. So I'm going to get my level. Now if you type uh, get level you might accidentally get this function one. You want to make sure you get the integer. Because that's the one that's actually representing our level system. So then I want to get gold. And then for this last one, I'm just going to get my actor transform. So level goes to level, gold goes to gold, transform to transform. Now once you get to the end of the list, at the end of the sequence, then we want to drag out our save system and save game to slot. And the slot being the save slot that we clicked at the very beginning, which we'll be we'll be setting that up in our save screen widget in just a second. So I'm going to compile all that real quick. So we're seeing if a save game exists, we're creating it if it doesn't. If it does, then we're saving it to slot so that we can load it cast to it and then update all the variables and then finally saving all the new variables to the slot all right so now in our save screen widget we're going to click on our save slot one which I'm going to call save slot one and then at the very bottom we're going to add an on clicked event so for the first one what we're going to do so we're just going to cast to third person game mode or whatever game mode yours has for the object we're going to get game wait not game state get game mode get game mode and then we will just save game and for this one I'm just gonna say for save slot I'm just gonna call it one So the way we can reflect our save on screen and actually check, make sure it's working <coughs> is inside my save screen widget that has gone back to the screen for some reason. I'm going to get rid of pre-construct and event tick. And then on event contract construct, we want to add a sequence node because I'm going to have three. So I want to check three different things. So I'm going to see does save game exist? For the first one, it's just going to be slot one. We don't have to cast or get the actual one. I'm going to add a branch. Don't need to create it. We just want to worry about if it does exist, and then we need to update all this. So, does it exist? If it does, then we will cast to our save. Wait. Play a save. There it is. 
How did I do this on the other one? Let me check. Let me check one more thing. That's the wrong one. Does save game exist? Oh, then we just load. Okay. I skipped a step. I went back to the wrong screen. So we don't cast just yet. We need to load game from slot. Slot being number one. And then we cast to our player save game. Because we can use this return value as the object. So if a save game exists, then we'll load it, cast to it. And then let's see, I got text for gold, text for level, and location. So this is just to show you that it's working. So I'm going to cast to the save. I'm going to do set text of text. I add a sequence node right here. I'm going to get location. Hook that up. Drop it in place. Hook it to my sequence node. I can really move these down here, I suppose. I'm going to set text of text on this one also. And set text of text on this one. I'm going to add a pin real quick and hook these up. Then I'm going to get gold. Hook that to that one. And then get my level. Oh, this looks bad. All right, let's see what we can do to kind of clean it up a little bit. You know what? That's looking that's looking fine. That's for now. So one thing I like to do personally is uh, when I have this level, I don't want it to just be a one. I like it to be zero one. So to do that, to adjust how many numbers it'll actually show, right here where it converts the integer to text, this minimum integral digits, it's how many. Like, so if it just has one like that, then it'll be just like that. It'll be just a one. But if you put two, then it'll be zero, one, three, zero, zero, one, etc. So this is just to reflect that we're saving our data. So now after we save, what we can do is just hook this save game directly to the does save game exist so that it automatically updates those texts. So I'm going to play real quick. Double check, make sure I did this right. Pretty sure. Hmm. What's she doing wrong? What did I do wrong? Set text, SP location, casting. All right. Hmm. I'm gonna try something real quick. Let me just get rid of that. Maybe if I just plug that directly in. Ah, okay. So uh, what I did wrong was I tried to use that that set. We can actually get rid of that and just plug directly in uh, because we have to we can't do that you gotta plug that directly into the save game to slot casting to it and then we'll just drag down for the save game object just like that otherwise it won't work right apparently so yeah but there's my save information so if I run up to this lady and let's say I'm going to buy something and then I run back and I save slate so it's updating all our information and then if I play again it should be there yeah it's all right there so I can cancel out I'm back in editor mode but when I run back in and actually 
check it, then yeah, it's saving everything just like it should. So in the next video, because this one's probably going on, well, not bad, but I'm trying to keep these shorter. But uh, in the next one, we'll actually set up loading so that we can, well, actually in the next one, I'll uh, be going over all the rest of the variables uh, to save every, because we got to go through like our character's entire inventory, uh, their gear, setting it up to where when they load in, if they had equipment equipped, it'll automatically spawn back on them and everything. So we're going to go through all of these in the next video. So that's, that's going to be fun. So let's save real quick, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye-bye.